Welcome, true believers, to Bad Wolf Comics. I'm your host, The Bad Wolf, and today we're going to go through the top five custom dust jackets in the Bad Wolf Comics library. Welcome back, True Believers. I am the Bad Wolf. This is Bad Wolf Comics, and today we're going to go through my top five favorite custom dust jackets of my entire collection. These are all X-Men books. When I first started doing custom dust jackets, I really was working on my X-Men collection. I had some very specific ideas about what I wanted to do with some of these books, and we're going to share them with you today. These are dust jackets I haven't shared yet. Uh, they were some of the very first dust jackets I had Roy do for me. Uh, very special projects. Roy did make all of these covers for me as usual. He does all of my custom dust jackets and he has for quite some time. I wish we had thought of the Bad Wolf Comics logo back then, but uh, we didn't and I'm not reprinting these. So I'm going to go through each one. We're going to show you the original. We're going to show you the, the new one and we're going to show you the side by side. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start this out with Bishop's Crossing. Now, that's a great cover. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's nothing terribly wrong with that cover per se, but it's just not the cover that should have been used for Bishop's Crossing. Let's take a look at our spine here. Now our spine just has the marvel there and the standard lettering. And then here's our back. And I bet most of you are already have already guessed which cover I used for this. We went ahead with Uncanny X-Men number 282. When Bishop crossed over for the first time, I just felt that this cover was a much better choice for this book. Uh, now we also did a few changes here, so we made the spine so it actually says Omnibus on there. Uh, this was Roy's design for the spine, I chose the cover, and you know, I can't remember if I chose the back or not, but I'm always big on the uh, collected covers for the back, so we went with that. And that is our Bishop's Crossing. Put this over here. In our next book, when this came out originally, I don't like to be negative in my videos, but I really could not stand the art that went with this. Uh, I think it was X-Men 300. Uh, but Fatal Attractions was the next book that we did. I, don't, I never liked this cover, not on the single issue, not on the omnibus. It was just not something that uh, I, I really did, cared for. Uh, I just don't like this style of art. Uh, so we definitely had to go with something else, uh, but let's take a look at our spine here. Here's our standard spine, and then here's the back. The back's really awesome with X-Men 25 where, where, you know, Magneto's literally ripping the adamantium off of Wolverine's skeletal structure. But let's take a look at the custom. Now the custom, I couldn't go with anything other than X-Men 25. And Roy did such an amazing job on this. I don't know if you can see it very well, but if you look at that hologram, that's just a scanned picture. That's not an actual hologram, but it looks amazing. Originally, when I decided to do this, I actually went and purchased an X-Men 25 and I cannibalized it and cut the hologram off the cover. Sadly, I wasn't thinking this is an oversized book, and so that hologram was too small. It didn't really go with, with the cover of this book, so I ended up cutting up an X-Men 25 for nothing. But Roy did an amazing job on this hologram. I couldn't have asked for a better outcome on this book. Uh, we do have a new spine here. I believe that, that was already set up. Roy already did that one for the spine. And then we have our collected covers in the back. It's one of my favorite custom dust jackets in my entire collection is Fatal Attractions. Again, Roy, shout out, man. I, I can't say enough good things about the scan of this hologram. I don't know how you found that, but it, 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 it's absolutely amazing. It looks great. Moving on. All right, next. Next we have Legion Quest. Legion Quest is the prelude to Age of Apocalypse. It's where uh, Legion tried to go back in time and take out Magneto so his father wouldn't have any opposition and he could live his dream. Uh, but as many of you know, uh, didn't go as planned and uh, things, things went wrong and Age of Apocalypse was kicked off. Now here's our spine. Again, just the standard marble. And here's our back, that's the standard back. Now, this cover meant a lot to me. It's, it's one of my all-time favorite covers, and believe it or not, it's actually not a Jim Lee cover. Uh, but it's so iconic, I had a canvas made out of it. And you, if you haven't seen my room tour 
from when I first started, you can go ahead and check that out, or you can wait till the end of this month when I do our end of the year room tour and I'll show it to you again. But yeah, I don't understand why Marvel didn't use this to begin with. It is such an iconic cover. This is the cover, in my opinion, that should have been used for Legion Quest to begin with. I love this book. I love this cover. I love this art. It's so powerful. And I remember when I first saw it on the newsstand, I was like, no way. They're, they're, that, that's not happening. It's a bit of a spoiler on the cover, but it's leaps and bounds better than the original, I think. Uh, now, Roy also did the back on this one. We have collected covers, but we also have a little bit of a storm picture there. That's great. And Roy also fixed the Marvel and made it an omnibus. So that is Legion Quest. Great book. Great art. All right. Now these last two are very special to me. They are my number one and two, top two favorite dust jackets in my entire collection. I approached Roy and asked if he could do some wraparound covers. Uh, these standard covers are great, but I had some ideas where I really wanted to get these wraparound covers done. Um, and we did these books as a set, uh, because, well, they are a set. So, uh, first is Claremont Lee's X-Men, Volume 1. Now, for this book, they could not have chosen a better cover. Marvel did actually get it right this time. Their presentation was just off. So, what we did is we actually did use the same cover. We just blew it up and then did the wraparound. And that's how it came out. It looks great, man. In my opinion, it's, it's the best presentation they possibly could have done with this. I'm not sure why they didn't do it before. Maybe put the X-Men logo up here. Um, I didn't wrap it around the spine because when you do that, it just it didn't look good. We also got rid of that ugly white font lettering and used the blue logo from... I actually got this logo from Legion Quest. Uh, usually I try and mix it up with different books, but the Legion Quest logo was... I just liked it. And uh, Jim Lee is my favorite artist. Claremont is one of my favorite writers. And so when they both came together on this book, I just had to do it justice and give it the best spine colors I could find. Uh, but this is our first wraparound cover. Came out really well, I think. And last but certainly not least, this is my all-time number one favorite dust jacket in my entire collection. This will be for the Lee Claremont Omnibus Volume 2. Now... This omnibus has so many great covers, so many iconic covers. The, the Rogue, Magneto, and Savage Land cover was amazing. Uh, this cover that they used was amazing. They had several covers they could have chosen. And I think f this cover isn't bad, but it's just not the one that it should be. But before we get to that, let's take a look. Here's our spine. Here's our back. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. This is another great Jim Lee cover. I, it's so good, I even had a canvas made out of it. If you've watched my other room tour video, you've seen it, or you'll see it soon at the end of the month. However, there is one cover that, hands down, without a doubt, should have been on this in the first place. Whether they use single issues or whether they use the full fold-out, and I think you know which one I'm talking about, folks. Let's take a look. Now, I got the recolor of the number one reboot from Jim Lee, and it is absolutely glorious. Uh, we didn't go all the way through. Uh, I actually saw another person that was uh, commissioning Roy to do this cover. He didn't use the recolor, he used the original, and he had the whole picture go across the spine, and I got it, it looked terrible. Uh, so we went ahead and just did the spine and separated it there, but come on guys, why wasn't this cover used? Can, can anyone tell me why wasn't this cover used on this omnibus? It is the perfect cover for this book. And here we have them side by side. Here's our spines. And our backs are very different because, as you know, it is a wraparound cover. Uh, but that's it, folks. This is the best cover in my entire collection, in my opinion. Um, as you can see, I already have a canvas made out of it. It's one of my favorite all-time iconic pictures from, from Jim Lee. But this is the best cover I could find. We found a really nice uh, digital copy of this of this image, which is how I had uh, the, the canvas made. So I used the same image to make this dust jacket. I sent it out to Roy. And once again, without Roy, I couldn't do any of these projects. He does phenomenal work. But thanks again, Roy, for bringing some of my best ideas to life, man. I couldn't have done it without you. All right, let's get our final shot. But that's it for our top five custom dust jackets from the Bad Wolf Comics Library. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, but stick around, true believers. Bad Wolf Comics has much more in store for the holiday season. Next week, Omnigeddon continues with our December haul. Christmas weekend, I'll be doing an overview of Claus, how Santa Claus began. And New Year's weekend, the last video of the year, folks, we'll be doing an end of the year room tour. With that said, I am the Bad Wolf. This is Bad Wolf Comics. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.